welcome to Music from the Tower, highlighting the beauty of sacred and classical music. We come to you from the Tower of Hope on the magnificent campus of Christ Cathedral in Garden Grove, California. Now, here's your host, John Romeri. And welcome to Music from the Tower. In this episode, our tower is filled with the Libero Boys from London. These wonderful singers now are making your third appearance here at Christ Cathedral, and you've already sung here at Crystal Cathedral, so this is a home where the Libra Boys come every single year. And we have Robert Preisman there, conductor and director and arranger and everything, the conceiver of this whole concept. So welcome, everybody. It's great to have you here in the tower. Thank, Thank you. you for being here. Thank you. So, uh, Robert, I'm going to have you introduce the boys. Would you tell us who we have? Uh, yes, indeed, John. Uh, so here's Tig. And here is Daniel, and, and here is Cassius. Hello. And they are, in order of size, uh, Tig, uh, a twelve, who's twelve year old, and uh, came to Libra when he was just six, weren't you? Six, yeah. Um, and so you've been in uh, six years, five years. Yeah, five years. Yeah, by, wow. By the maths of that, that would seem to be right. Yeah. And so Daniel is ten, and he's been with us a few years. And yeah. He's the Daniel was size. actually on the radio with us last year. He was right. the youngest last year. Wasn't yes, he? it was excellent. Uh, and Cassius is also ten. Uh, is the smallest here, but not actually necessarily the youngest. I'm not sure. Is that right? Are you younger than Daniel? Yes. No. And Cassius, how long have you been in the choir? Uh, I've been in the choir three years or three and a half or something. I'm not. You sure joined, sure, joined but... quite young as well, didn't you? Yeah, I joined at the end of year two. Well, you were probably about yeah. six as well. Let's have yeah. Mr. Priceman tell us all about this group and how it got going. And just in case, in case there's one listener left in the world <laughs> that doesn't know about this amazing choir, <laughs> let's tell them how it got going, how long it's been in existence. You have traveled the world with these people. Yes, I know. I'm not quite sure how it all happened, really. All by accident, I, I have to say. Um, but it's, I mean, it's basically a liturgical choir that sings mass twice most Sundays and sings a massive range of uh, music that you would expect from that style of choir right across the ages. Um, a few years ago, we had the idea for uh, trying some arrangements using the boys' voices and uh, slightly more inventive orchestrations and perhaps some keyboards, perhaps even some slightly more modern percussion, though not kind of like, you know, rapping type percussion <laughs> or anything like that, but just something a, a little bit cooler. And we made it into uh, something which could be performed to a broader audience, we thought, so that we would bring the idea of the boys' voices singing in what is it's mostly... Uh, high notes. Well, oh, true, no. using their full range of the treble voice, which would be familiar to anyone that uh, studies or knows about choral music, but would hopefully appeal to those people that, if you like, were the initiated listeners, but also would uh, perhaps reach a, a a broader audience to people who wouldn't normally come into contact with that uh, sort of music. So we have, I suppose, had a mission attached to it after we started it, really, because <laughs> there was never any great uh, sort of aspiration to begin with, because we just didn't know whether on how how it would go. But over the years, it's touched so many hearts, and I mean, it it is so wonderful for us to hear from. I mean, just thousands of people, really, who write to us uh, on the website and who come to our concerts, um, who clearly find the whole style, concept, music, arrangement and, and voices uh, something very special. It is very special. And so if we came to London and heard you sing a mass, you wouldn't be singing any of this. You would be singing normal choral music. No, that's right. I mean, the, the, the point about it, and I can speak about this in this context on this radio station, because, uh, you know, there is, the, there is a broader perspective to Libra, which we would not normally make uh, a great deal of conversation about because normally we're performing just the the, the liberal style of music but of course there is an enormous number of people involved with liberal back home who don't come on tour with us who sing with yet a wider range of voices because all the old liberal boys are still many of them still singing with us so when they their voices change to become alto tenor and bass and so forth they form the bottom harmonies for a, a normal traditional for a 12-part choir. And do you have uh, some of those boys travelling with so you? So we have some boys who are on the turn 
uh, social <laughs> young tenors who have a particular sound of voice which is just right to blend with the lower harmonies of the upper voices. So the, the treble boys, they normally sing in about six parts, going from the very high ones right down to a sort of gentle tenor sound. But if we were to impose on the bottom of that the bigger voices of the more adult, who would mostly be student uh, in their, and, and people in their 20s, it would change the sound. It wouldn't quite be the same. So that's not what so we travel with. So for the classical things. So they will do, you know, full choral works, you know, whether it's Mozart Requiem or whether it's uh, cathedral-style music or polyphony or chant. You know, they will do all that back home. But we don't choose to take that on tour because we, we're addressing a slightly broader audience Audience. Uh, was that a conscious thing? Like if you, um, for example, the Vienna boys, when they come, their first half of their program is very, very classical, the same things they sing in chapel service every week. But then they go on to do all these pop things, you know, which is always a little bit difficult as a cathedral presenter where I need it to be sacred. But they've made that conscious choice that they're going to give us a taste of what they do and then move on. But yours is really, when you travel, it's the Libra sound. Yes, well, it's perceptive, obviously you to spot <laughs> that option we, we have deliberately not done that uh, and some people have said to me oh why not have them in their robes and then they can sing the holy stuff and then after half time they can come out with their hoodies and you know they can be all cool and and seem start singing the pop stuff that I find really objectionable. Actually. <laughs> I would completely hate that. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we try to find a, a way of arranging the music so that the, the two worlds meet in a way. They do indeed, uh, really. Yeah, I mean, because you have sacred texts going on here. Absolutely. You know, they aren't yes. all just pop songs. Once in a while, there no. is one. But it really is, uh, you know, it, it, it's a wonderful blending. I mean, and I think it's that unusual blending of it all that makes it so popular. Now, we're recording this on the day of one of your concerts, and I want you to know there have been at least 10 people standing in line since 1030 this morning. Now, they're standing out in the hot California sun since 10.30 this morning Good for heavens. a 7 o'clock concert to be able to get in, to get to be <laughs> right in the front to hear this concert. And probably the last time we were here, you had someone who had attended 100 concerts or something. Ah, uh, well, yes, we do have some very devoted followers. But we also have quite a good following of people that just happen upon it by accident. Our great frustration sometimes is that we can't enable more people to happen upon it by accident. Um, and it, it is quite difficult because it doesn't fit a specific genre. So you couldn't say, well, we play it on a classic station or we play it on a pop station. I mean, or a radio new station, age or, you know, or you whatever. Know, there's so it, many because it doesn't fit one separate one. You know, well, different it's you songs. separate. You're unique. Yeah. It's, Absolutely so it's, unique. it's quite a challenge sometimes to let people know about it. But um, once they become... Once they know. Absolutely. Fun, either that or they just walk out. No, no, no. I, I don't. I've never seen anyone walk no, out. You can't get any, enough yeah. of it. I, and after the concert, every single person will line up to speak with every single one of these boys and get them to sign a program and sign. They're like rock stars, uh, uh, choral rock stars, as they go from city to city. And you, my friend, have done that for these boys. <laughs> you know, you have given them such a gift of music and. Uh, I love the idea, you know, the organist Virgil Fox was that same way. You know, at the same time he was alive, there was someone named E. Power Biggs, and he took the classical world of the organ everywhere there was. You know, and everyone scholarly flocked to hear him play every single note. But Virgil Fox had all this this incredible technique and could play faster than light and on any, any instrument possible, registration and creativity beyond all telling. And he took the organ to a whole nother world. And that's what I think the Liberal Boys have done. You know, I think they've taken choral music. Fi and, and the real test are my own grandchildren. They play your CDs in the car all really? the time. They love it. And way back to your, yeah. way back to your St. Louis days, you know, they heard you in St. Louis. When you first brought us. Yes. Yeah, and indeed. I was so happy yeah. to We were do there that. a couple of days ago, actually. I know. I heard all about it. Your <laughs> lighting looked fabulous this year. So that's the other piece is there's lighting. There's, you, you're in these wonderful white, white robes and the whole thing keeps changing the whole time you're singing. Who orchestrates all of that? Do you we have a, we, a, a lighting designer does come with us, and he's particularly clever because, of course, what you can do in a large 
concert hall with fixed lighting and what you can do in a, a church venue are very different and he has to be very creative and also it's a question of taste isn't there because what you might do with quite zappy lighting with laser <laughs> type effects or what do you call these things um in a theater you couldn't do it wouldn't be appropriate for the st louis basilica or even well, I remember evil. seeing parts of the Basilica in St. Louis that I'd never seen anywhere <laughs> ever because your light would light up something 100 feet in the air. You know, I'm thinking, wow, I've never really seen that before. It's fabulous. <laughs> you know, it, it, you have done so much. I can. You're unfortunately not performing in, in the new cathedral yet. Uh, because Great sadness, John. Very I cannot sad. deny. Our new cathedral is shut down uh, because we're working on the organ. And the next time you're here, the organ will be playing beautifully. And But the building is all white. Oh, so wow. air, white yeah. quadrifoils everywhere. The organ is all painted white. So you will be able to do. It might not be visible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no one will know when the boys walk out. It's like, where are they? Oh, there they are. Okay, great. Well, uh, I think we probably should hear a little bit of this music. We're, we're tantalizing the listeners with uh, all this great stuff. Shall we start with the Empire of Yes. No, that's now, really... that's a religious text. Uh, oh, indeed. Something yeah. very, oh, yeah. uh, actually, from a... Funeral. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So how does it that work? From the uh, the requiem mass. Yes, yeah. that's right. So uh, maybe Tig could tell us about that. Tig will tell you that we did this for our recent album, and this was also one that we we made a film of, wasn't it? We, we made a we made a music video two years ago, where we would where we went to like an ancient chapel in on the coast in Britain, and we acted like lost children. Kind of like trying to find the light, finding our way like from the sea, and it was quite weird because we had like a drone camera and everything like around us, and it just shows like how unique Libra is because I don't think like big choirs and famous choirs would be filming music videos. Exactly, yeah. exactly, and and that you ha you owe uh, Mr. Priceman the thanks for that. Yeah. It's his creative mind that enough, has, John, enough has created this. No, it's true. I'm in such awe and admiration. I know who to ask. That's every all. time you come, you know, it reminds me again. Uh, a what you've given to these boys and what you've given to those of us in the musical world. It's just phenomenal. Were you on that one, Cassius? Were you on in Paradisum? Yeah, I was yes. in the video here. Yeah. Yes, you run a video as well. And you heard, that was quite an interesting thing. Now, is that on YouTube? Where do we see this video? Yes. So we'll um, YouTube, we, uh, our YouTube channel, Libra, just search up on YouTube. And that's another place where we're quite big because we've got uh, over 500,000 views on Libra. On, uh, no, 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 Tug. That doesn't even begin to. to it. <laughs> 60 million. Oh, 60, 60 uh, million. Wow. Oh, 500,000 subscribers. Are you talking about subscribers? S subscribers. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, million. we will make some more subscribers by putting yeah. the link to that on our website. You can always uh, enjoy these shows on ChristCathedralMusic.org, which is where, of course, you can get tickets to Libra when they're in town or any of our other concerts. You can see photographs of today and all of the concerts. Concerts, and uh, we will make sure that uh, your music videos are there. All right, let's hear In Paradisium, and we will be right back. Is this an arrangement you wrote? Is this? Uh, no, it's not by me, actually. I, I, I arranged it, but the original was by a chap called Ben Robbins, actually, who used to be a chorister at Westminster Cathedral in London, in London. So he's sort of steeped in that tradition as well. Okay, well, here we are, and we will be right back. This is Music from the Tower. Stay tuned. Don't go away. We have lots more with the Libra Boys.
and we are back. This is Music from the Tower, and our tower is filled with Libra boys. And uh, we heard a little bit from Tig about... John, did you just say Tig? Tig. 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 Yes, Tig. Yeah. Like Tiger. Tig. But All right, I'm going to get it. I promise I'm going to get it. But now we're going to go to Daniel. Daniel, I know for certain, he's an old radio star from last season. And Daniel, you're going to tell us a little bit about uh, this next piece, Angel. Yeah, will you? Uh, you have a solo in that tonight, right? Uh, yes, I do. Um, um, fortunately, I didn't get to record it, but um, I'm, I think I'm really lucky to uh, be singing this song live because it was specially written for Japan, so it wasn't just one of our old pieces. It was specially written, and um, it was for um, Universal Studios. Like a Christmas kind of theme song for the, for the park. Oh, fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, that means um, we don't need to stand in any queues when we go there um so oh that's yeah. very cool you completely just get to free. go right in yeah. yeah completely free admission as well wow and so we just get straight to the front of the queue and we can go on tons of rides and stuff. does the libra director get to do such a thing as well i have to supervise the children obviously and obviously. Be, remain uh, you uninvolved must, it would be <laughs> and sit in the coffee area you don't ride the rides not that stuff. Oh. I do the water flume things. I'm going to yeah. those. I okay. Like those. Yeah. R- Rob does like that. Well, yeah. We have different tastes. I like kept yeah. screaming on the Harry Potter ride. Oh, yes. <laughs> that was... Yes, I did do that. Mm. Yeah. Um, there's some really good stuff. So we're very lucky to have um, USGA, a sort of companion, really, So because we've done that song for them. Well, that's fabulous. And and this is the end of your U.S. tour. And how many cities? And uh, Cassius, why don't you tell us where you've been on this tour? So first we went to St. Paul, which we stayed for four nights. Wow. And we had a concert. And then we went to St. Louis. Louis. St. Louis, yes. Yeah. Right. And we sang in the basilicas, didn't we, at St. Yeah. Paul and St. Louis. And it was very big, <clears throat> both of them. And uh, then we went to Oklahoma, which was fun as well. Then we got a flight to Phoenix and then to L.A. And uh, now we're in L.A., but we had a concert. And uh, then we had an... And now this is our last concert. Your very last one. And when do you go home? Tomorrow? No. Uh, No, we fly on the... we We fly on the Thursday night... Okay, so you've got a little bit more time. Yeah. So So no Disneyland time. You went to Universal instead. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, We we get to, like, have some time to, like, explore the city, sort of. And what was your favorite part so far on this trip? Obviously, there's lots of, like, free time activities where we get to go, like, swimming, like, going to, like, trampoline parks and playing football. But I thought it was quite... We we visited the St. Louis City Museum... Oh, yes. A uh-huh. big, yeah. That's right. That was very... Very creative. Yeah, yeah it's um, sort of abstract. They've got, like, um, they've got, like, a humongous outdoor area made of, like, it has, like, some m- pl- retired planes and trucks and stuff on the roof. And it's like... Oh, fun. Yeah, half, like, half museum, half creative, fun, like, sites and house. Yeah, like, yeah. You, you might have walked around every single floor, but you wouldn't have... Um, even seen half of it because there's so many tunnels that weave in. And That's excellent. Out, um, Is there a big slide that goes through? Yeah, that? yeah, yes. big slide that I goes all the way down. I remember seeing that big slide. Um, this is so great that not only do they have these musical memories of singing in some of America's greatest churches, yeah. but they have these travels and these trips and these, uh, you know, as a choir director myself, I I can't tell you how many people I hear from. We just announced our new trip that we're going to Vienna and Prague and immediately I got an email from one of my former singers in St. Louis who said, oh, I remember our trip to there. I would love to come with you. She's all signed up, ready to go. You know, I mean, it's the trips that make those memories, you know, whether it's the great concerts or just a fun day at a park, right, or a museum. It's a challenge for us, though, because, of course, you know, underpinning it has to be some kind of financial Ah, uh, yes. You know, and of course, the any promoter or anyone looking at the budget would uh, want us to fly in and out, uh, having just done the concerts, really, just end to end. 
But, of course, one of the great things about coming to America is you can't get anywhere quickly. <laughs> quickly. Uh, so it means it has to be spaced out more. Um, and, well, of course, and, their and boys... They, I mean, the whole point about Libero is that they're doing it in their free time. So you don't want them to, you know, have given up... Uh, well, this is nearly three weeks, this tour, of their summer holiday, p- to just be worked incredibly hard. So, you know, I mean, they enjoy the singing, they love the audiences and so forth. But, well, that's because they're loved know, immediately still, back. It still <laughs> requires, you know, a certain amount of work, and, and you wouldn't want to be doing that end-to-end every day, you know, in the manner of perhaps a full-on rock tour, you know, when they're literally travelling overnight and then they're in the and next then night. The next place, exactly. You couldn't do that with a group like ours. So, of course, necessarily, you know, we're finding lots of things for the boys to do in their free time, though it has to be carefully managed because, of course, their voices are quite delicate, really, yeah. and if they're going that, to... That can be one of the hardest parts of, like, a long tour, like, like a three-week tour, like we've done consecutively to the States, is managing our voices, because... Yeah. So, so we do, like, silent football, yeah. and oh. we have to be silent when we're doing, like, activities that you would shout for. Yeah. And uh, we'd have to, like, clap our hands to, like, make signals um, and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I would say Rob isn't too hard on us, but uh, he he does try and make sure we look after our voices. That's excellent. Yeah. That's excellent because he wants you to stay on as adult singers. I know his madness. I want him to get through the solo. <laughs> yes, exactly. The exactly. <laughs> and it's tricky with boys, right? How about the change of voice? Let's talk about that for a second. How devastating is that? Are all of you still troubles? Well, yeah, we, yeah, we're yeah. all still troubles, but... I mean, there are older boys in the choir who are still on tour but have, have lost, can't solo, can't solo now from and, the choir uh, and are singing the, like, low tenor parts, which This past year in our choir, we had yeah. two or three of our really wonderful treble boys become treble baritones. <laughs> and uh, it, it was a very tough thing. You know, it, it is, was, uh, it was really tough. Luckily, a couple you were organ it. scholars, and so they've of shown course. on the organ for a bit. I think, you see, in general, our boys don't leave, you see. They, so it's not like a, a, a cathedral choir which has to be linked to an education system where they have to leave at a particular age, and certainly where their voices change. We actually need those boys to do a very important role in the lower part of Libra. Yes, our boys had to move to a new choir immediately. You know, I mean, they tried. But 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 we don't, you see, so they're they're, they're all part of it. So although someone like, for instance, Alex Gula, who you interviewed a year ago, he would have been singing the solos as a treble last year. Yeah, um, it was very surprising for uh, Lear as well, because he was a high first and would sing all the high notes. But now his voice has kind of yes. gone down. Leo, you were saying? Yeah. yeah. That's right. Now, Leo, um, he, he was here last year also was well. interviewed last year. Yes. He, he had an incredibly high voice as a, a treble. Sang. And uh, he yeah. last sang in Moscow in January. Yeah. And he was singing literally top Ds. Top D, yeah. In the part. And no more. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Now. But he's got a pleasant tenor voice already. You know, not a classical full-on tenor yeah. voice, but it's a nice light range, which we can employ in the liberal arrangement. So That's so Also, once you've done touring, like, for example, some of the boys have been asked to come on and help as, like, stagehands for, for, throughout Libra. So when you, right. once you yeah. stop touring, there's so many more opportunities. So running the happen. rounders yesterday. Yeah. 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 Yesterday. And, um, I don't know who you have Savannah touring this is. year, but last time you were here, it was an ex liberal boy who I remember yes. from St. Louis. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Pretty much all well, all of the boys that are working on it are ex liberal Yeah. Yeah, and um, or ex liberal parents. Um, with with all these kind of lower parts and other jobs that are available in Libra, it doesn't really feel too bad as your voice breaks. So as it breaks, you can kind of go, it goes down. But as you're a treble, you like, you'd see like all of the um, people doing the backstage, backstage, like giving the uh, the checks with like all of the lights and everything. And then you would think, well that you'd maybe like to do that one day once your voice is broken. Yes, it's kind of cool and that they don't have so, to So, yeah, leave. so, like, it's kind of a bit more comforting, so it doesn't really hit you as much as your voice starts breaking. Oh, that sounds like someone's prepared you for that day. 
Uh, it has the Robert. Uh, <laughs> I have never said that to you, Daniel. Well, you just you just said that. I'm, I'm he, very touched. touched. I'm beautifully, very touched. yeah, beautifully. <laughs> All right, let's hear a little more music. Now, this is not you, Daniel, but there is a solo in this song called Angel. This is from your album called Entitled Hope. This is out a couple of years, right? Maybe two yes, years yes, old. Yes, yeah. And uh, but this particular piece was written for your tour in Japan. And when we come back, let's talk about more of the countries you visited. OK. All right. Here's the song Angel. And we will be right back with a lot more from Libra. Stay tuned. Back. This is Music from the Tower, and today we have Robert Preisman and three of the superstar singers from Libra. These boys are going to tell us in this segment just a little bit about touring and, and what that's like. And some of the places you've been, it's astonishing. Let's start with you. So just recently, this year alone, we've been, like last year in October, we were in Japan. Um, and for how many days? How long? About a week or so, and then we were in Christmas, in ja- in January, actually, we were in Moscow for only about three days, so that was a short tour, like a one concert in Moscow. And then we were in the Philippines in, the fe- in February, and now we're here in the States now in the summer, and so it, just ne- in the October we're going back to Japan, so yeah. You have a huge following in Japan. There's someone here from Japan who came for today's concert. Where on earth do you get the funding for all this? Uh, and how can we help you get more? <laughs> oh, well. oh, John. Yes, we really do need some funding. Libera is, is a charity. It's registered as a charity in, the, in this country as well as in the UK. The two aspects of Libera are, are, of course, the touring, which is very expensive. I mean, we have brought uh, nearly 30 boys and they travel for That's the same cost of a flight as an adult. Of course, of um, course. So uh, just to do that, and obviously with all the uh, 
travelling and the hotels and so forth. There's a lot. And, and the other side of and the meals, do they cover their own meals, or you cover heads. their meals? No, 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 of course we. Pay. So the boys no, don't they have pay to pay nothing. No, anything. They, no, no, they don't. No. That's no, unbelievable. No. Don't um, tell my choir. But <laughs> <laughs> we pay everything. But but the, but the other side is the the regular week to week running of Liberal because you know it it, it isn't founded in an institution like a school or a college or a cathedral Church like or that. Anything, yeah. So it's an independent thing. Um, so that requires you know, money because if you want all your people that are part of the staff to give up the time on an official basis uh, then you know, and, and to actually book the time if they're freelancers or whatever, then you have to pay them no matter what their goodwill may be towards right. the group. They can't you know, afford to work for nothing. So, of course, there are always expenses to be paid along the way and, and it is a challenge i i can't um, pretend it's not difficult sometimes um well certainly the albums help a little bit yes they, and the they concerts do to some extent but it's certainly great to have the big audiences i think that that makes a difference but something like the the coming to the states would not make any money at all actually i'm sorry to be honest about well, it, no, it, that, it, it that, that's it, absolutely we're lucky if we get through with we with all know that any about concerts you know we just had the the uh, pacific symphony in the cathedral i had two thousand people in attendance over two thousand the cathedral was packed to jam but there was not one and somebody said well, what do you do with all the money you make tonight i said well tonight's concert probably lost about thirty thousand dollars you know, because all of the union musicians and and we had to put up a stage and we had to, you know, uh, there's so much that goes into that. But people see a full house and they think, well, this is just great. Of course, they're making money hand over foot. The powers that be at the cathedral can't wait to get their hands on it all. But it's really uh, I, I'm just astonished at how much you travel. And uh, that really speaks to your dedication to this group. Well, are the boys dedicated? Yes. Yeah, because they yep. give up so much of their free time to it. Really. So were those all breaks, Daniel, on school? You were just off yeah. school? Uh, yeah, we, 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 never, we always never really school. We never really tour. We've never tour in, during, during school, school time. Because, as Rob said, school for us is separate, completely separate to Libra. They care for our education. Mm. And do you, do you go to different schools? You're yeah, we all go to different, different schools, schools um, um, across South London, where the choir is based. And like in the whole choir of Libra, boys go up to university and all that. But we always taught in holiday time, like during summer break, Easter, and like half term. It can be difficult sometimes. I mean, well, we, do we the have schools all the, take a break at the same in, time? Ours are no, all in different Well, places. that's the first thing. That's the first yeah. problem, of course. The second problem is that you only have a week, say, at half term. We have these things called half terms in the UK. I don't think you have No, them, we do don't. Uh, so in, a say, a 12-week, 10-week term, you'll have a week in the middle. But, of course, in order to get the concerts uh, that people want you to sing at uh, at the weekend, you have to be able to arrive there uh, in time to perform, and if you're travelling to the Far East, it's not it takes physically time, yeah. uh, possible to do it. So, it's um, like living out the on the boys West Coast, literally going to will Europe, go. You know. Well, they will. Li we actually literally pick the boys up in the coach from some of their near their schools and on the way to the airport. So they're literally in their school uniform and so forth, and then they change and become liberal boys on the way, wow. and, then, <laughs> and then kind of arrive at the airport because otherwise you you just couldn't do it really um so there there is always a you know pressure to to make that work logistically but it's fun it uh, well and it certainly is beautiful it, it's amazing what should we listen to next let's hear one more song well perhaps just to demonstrate the sort of slightly more formal side of uh Lib brothers um the uh, piece mother of god by taverner which comes from the all night vigil which is unaccompanied a cappella uh, and is on our most recent album. And that's called Beyond, right? And we will give that link, of course, on our website. This Taverner piece uh, it was kind of made famous in this country by Chanticleer. You know, everybody learned that oh, right. piece by their touring oh. around with it. So it's, it'll be wonderful to hear your version of it. And, and so here it is, a little piece by Taverner uh, called Mother of God. And we'll be right back with a lot more from these boys. Stay tuned.
and this is music from the tower and in today's tower we have all of the libra boys well three of them anyway the most important ones are they robert this is robert prizeman here uh, assessing his boys these guys are great daniel's an old pro he's been here with us before and tig is here and cassius uh, cassius how about these tours are these really fun yeah they're really fun because as well as all the singing you get so much free time that you that it's just it just really both of them matter and you like and you will sing sing and you will have free time and they'll They're both. loving their free time I can tell. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. are you guys the envy of just, all the boys in your neighborhood that you get to travel so much and you get oh, to sing? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Um, a lot of um, the parents and kids at school I, um, always try and talk to me about it. Do you recruit honest, for Libra? Do you go out and say, uh, well, you should sing with that, us that, too? No, that, that's sort of Rob's job because um, like, uh, he knows like what voices he'd like to He's have looking for. Us. Yeah, and, uh, and how does that work? Do you have auditions once a year or twice a year? Or how uh, do you get in this great group? Yeah, I mean, it, it's sort of informal uh, to some extent, but uh, we are sustained greatly by the support of several schools. And really, without that, we, we would be rather lost because it, it is such a difficult thing to introduce as a concept uh, for people. And parents will think of... Well, in London, in the UK, for instance, they'll tend to think of things like, I don't know, karate or rugby. Oh, or, it's the same you know, here. All There's 5,000 things. things. You know, they're, they're very obvious things that children do. Um, and they dab. The boys to sing is not an obvious thing to do. Would, that, would mm. you say that's right? Yeah, that's no. the- Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'm right, right, I was about to say no because it, <laughs> right, it's all confusing. But yeah. all the boy choirs in London, people don't think of that as an activity for boys to do? It's not. Really, like well, conventional, yeah. modern, and the way well, like the thing is, people in the UK work. Because yeah. London and well, uh, there's so uh, much like rap and grow up. Yeah, and, like yeah. as the world moves on, like it's getting like modern, and um, so everyone's like yeah, moving on to like pop and lots of other genres. So when they think of like a boys choir, they think of all classical. But then that's when Rob had the idea of kind of. Merging like the two worlds, as you said yeah. early, earlier on in this episode. Yes, well, it it really is. It's it's a difficult thing, isn't it? Uh, our kids, uh, you know, are very dedicated, and once they get in and have drunk the Kool Aid, they're ours for good. You know, I mean, you can't get rid of them. They love it, and and we travel and we tour, and and you know, not to the extent of you, but it's very difficult to get that concept across to parents because they want to give their children. The karate and the and the soccer and the this and the that. Well, they should try it all. Yeah. But then they're good at nothing, you know. Uh, and it's, <laughs> it's really that wonderful to like... see somebody spend several years really honing their skills. I think once introducing the concept of something like this to young boys in like from like seven to six to fifteen, the initial concept sounds odd. But once you get going with it it becomes more natural, like the concept and how it works. It becomes more, like, realistic yeah. in well, a way. The thing is, before I was introduced to Libra, I, a boys' choir wasn't really, like, it didn't On your really list. feel like <laughs> ideal. But um, when I started, I kind of thought to myself one time, how would it feel like if I hadn't have joined Libra? Yeah. And I was, yeah, yeah Imagine it's, like, it's where really you wouldn't puzzling. Have gone. It's yeah. like, because it, it becomes such a big part of you, and um, and you can, oh, it's a really nice thing to be part of after you've like had a go and tried out. And um, if you stay with the group, you like there's a lot more to it than just like your average boys choir. Well, and one of the nice things is the group is good at the beginning. When people just come to us and audition, and they have no idea what they're auditioning, they saw it in the newspaper. You know, but then when they hear the choir, they're astonished. You know, it's like, wow, this is really, you know, they're thinking of maybe their church choir, their school choir, and they come to us and hear us go. And, and I'm sure that's the way it is with you. When they when they go, well, come join a boys' choir, they have no idea what they're signing in no. for. Yeah, I thought it would be like some little camp thing. <laughs> Not bad camp, but like <laughs> a singing camp or something. Yeah. 
a few days that would make our voices good. But then when we go there, it proves how good Rob has got it all together and has made it. Well, you're very kind, Cassie. Now, how but I'm sure it... partly it's, it's the fact that you hear the other boys, who are a little bit older than you, uh, you hear their sound and yeah. you sing yeah. into that sound. So yeah. my job is kind of made easier by the senior boys because each generation passes on that. Well, and who yes, makes you make the, 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 so you you the excellent <laughs> choice of um, yeah. boys. Yeah, that, that's very good. But the thing is with Libra, um, like some... Uh, like directors like pride themselves on like making like every boy go like down to perfection and stuff like that and like identical. Uh, yeah identical Rob. and stuff like that but what um With Rob does boy. he's he's used all of our different voices and merged it into a sound so what it, what it would be is like libra isn't single voices it's just one sound made up of lots of different voices well and let's think of an average english choir their trebles and they're singing the soprano part maybe the soprano and the descant so they do all have to sound the same they're singing one part you're not you're singing in five and six it's parts. true it, yeah. it, it's also a different function really because i think if you are king's college cambridge or somewhere like that you know working every day to this incredibly high standard in a goldfish bowl as it were you know what looked by on by the world the world having to maintain this here. it's a very different job to what we have to do really so I, I i don't want to say that our way is correct it's just a different way of doing it and the reason it's different is because i need the boys to use their personalities and their personal charisma as it were to be able to sing solos and uh, to actually do something which is on stage which is a different function from a very impersonal singing in a choir stall in a cathedral or something not that we don't sing the same repertoire we do but so it, it is necessarily a, a slightly different thing. I mean, I, I have a particular thing about the chorister style of training where you always roll an R, even if the word hasn't got an R in it sometimes, there, or sometimes over pronouncing things like L's and things like that, or changing vowel sounds. And I, it's not that I wouldn't modify vowel sounds because you have to, to some extent, to be able to get a resonance on, in the different ranges of the treble voice. But if you're singing a solo in English and you start rolling R's all over the place, you put a kind of barrier yeah. between you and the, the audience. Uh, and, and I can't quite say why that is, but it, it, yeah. it, because you're sort of it, spe it's the yeah. spoken word. And if you go to a Libra concert, I feel every solo is different in its own way, but they're all kind of relatable. In a way, they're unique, but not completely different to um, like modern, normal like typical kind of pop singing. No, you wouldn't want to Yet this yeah. wonderful yeah. high sound that you create, how do you master that and how do you teach the boys to get up? So well, you, they you, certainly don't walk in the door. No, the, but the boys will have a natural uh, register or, or a natural tendency to be good at particular ranges. So, you know, we have uh, the boys that do the extremely high part, the, what we call the high firsts. They will have voices which naturally float up there. And you can generally spot those voices quite early on. So they become specialised in that region, but they don't all sing in that region. So, for instance, Tiger is what we'd call a... Not first treble. Forgive me saying ordinary first. Yeah. Your, 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 so your notes Ooh. would be, tend to be a little bit lower, wouldn't they? Yeah. Daniel does a bit of high first, but oh, yeah. he's also first. I'm normally... Whereas Cassius is a, actually a second, aren't you? Yeah, so you're yeah. the next one down. Bit but lower. then we have thirds, fourths... Uh, fifths who overlap with tenors, so it's kind of a range. So, those so That's even it. younger boys may sing the some of the lower notes. I mean, we've got boys who are in primary school who are thirds and fourths who sing quite low because that's where their register sounds the most interesting, or they're most developed in that. Uh, for us, you know, some are coming and they they're great on the melody, and then I have all these things above the melody rather than yes. all these low alto parts underneath. You know, uh, uh, well, let's hear a piece that's super high. How about Volcame? Is that that from your uh, album? Yeah, it's from Beyond, and uh, a boy um, who came on the show last year called Leo. He he does the very high part in this song, and. Uh, his voice has um, dropped a bit. But no, he's now singing the tenor parts, but... Yeah, but it, it just... 
Yeah, in this one, it demonstrates just how high, like, um, some of the liver sounds can reach. Okay, so, well, let's hear yeah. that, and then we'll come back and find out what's next for Libra, where they're headed next, and even find out about a guest appearance they made on a certain Christ Cathedral CD. Stay tuned. Don't go away. from the tower and we have had a wonderful hour with the Libra boys uh, with uh, their wonderful director arranger composer you name it founder Robert Preisman and then we have Tig our wonderful 12 year old and then we have Daniel our seasoned radio announcer here who has been even on last year's show and then we have Cassius thank you all for being with us so I'd like to hear a little bit about your Christmas album that's coming up and I'd like to thank you publicly for being on our Christ Cathedral album, one of our commissioned pieces called Stilet Angelis, written by Julian Revy, was not in time for our CD. So he went around the world and pasted it all together. And so who would you go to for troubles except the Libra boys? So he went to you and asked you to do it, and you so graciously accepted. Uh, tell us a, a little bit about that. How did uh, that come about? Yes, I mean, it was challenging because obviously we had to sing it without any particular accompaniment. It was challenging, wasn't it, Because yeah. it was quite slow, wasn't it? So we yeah. had to do a lot of clever, staggered very... breathing and things, didn't we, not it to was... collapse. It was, it, it was a real challenge. But after a lot of uh, tries here yeah, and... It was like, just getting the sustained... Yeah. Yes, it, it's this really wonderful it. English line in English that floats above this beautiful chant in four parts that's going on underneath. And then come handbells. And then there's the organ part. Because we never heard... Yeah, you never heard any of that. <laughs> and then on top of all of that comes the Carillon Tower Bells. Oh. And the Tower Bells well, the start ringing. Well, no, these, well, the ones right. on our recording are from uh, Yale University. Right. You know, so he recorded this in four separate places. Right. And then oh. somehow the engineer put it all together into this great piece. It's a beautiful piece. But I had to do it live, all parts sitting in front of me, and it was horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> it was just there aren't two measures that are the same beat pattern. That's true. You know, and sometimes the boys, the kids, were in one beat pattern and the adults in another. So it's like, okay, who am I concentrating on? on here i opted for the kids in every account but the kids sounded great and the chant was actually the chant right out of the right book so we took the uh, the uh, new right of dedicating a cathedral and in there was this wonderful still at angelus chant and so i asked the composer to be true to that chant which 
comes many, many times. But then I needed these verses, which are what you sang, the verses. But they, he superimposed them over rather than stopping the chant and singing a few verses like you might do in a psalm and antiphon. It was, But it really turned out beautifully. And it's on our CD, not yours, but ours. But I can't believe we have Libra on, on, our, uh, on, C- indeed, on our CD. Uh, but it's an, our dedication CD uh, for Christ Cathedral. Uh, some beautiful music on there by our choirs and the Libra and the Yale University and the Yale University Tower Bells and everything else. So thank you for being part of that. Thank you, boys, for working so hard on that piece. You sound spectacular. Thank you. And if you want to hear a little bit of that, uh, we'll put it on our website as well. But I want to hear a little bit about your Christmas album before we have to sign off. So tell us what's coming for Libra. What- well, it's a Christmas album, and it's coming soon. And it's Will it be out by this Christmas? Quite, yeah. Oh, definitely, yes. Yeah. And it's uh, quite original. And lots All of interesting compositions new? No, uh, when I say original, I don't mean that the tune's original. A few surprise ones. Uh, one which was a surprise for us, actually, is O Little Town of Bethlehem, because we sing... Actually, there are at least two tunes that are are used in the UK. The Forest Green. Yeah. Yes. Um, and then St. Louis. Uh, no, I don't know which one that is. St. Louis is a little town of Bethlehem. Yes, well, you yeah, see, we now do. that one is never normally sung in the UK, yeah. ever. Never. Zero, zero, yeah, that's never. The, that's the right. American version. But, yeah. but we, we have do. sung it. So oh, okay. So we have done that one. So you but, and the tune name is St. Louis. So yeah. Yeah. Thank you for you, telling you, me that. So that is definitely a, 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 an American it yes, was, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. absolutely. We've also done a spiritual called Poor Little Jesus. Which, which is in our concert know, tonight. Which in, is also yeah, there's there's an some, unusual yeah. inclusion, there's, there's which we're doing tonight. In quite the a lot of songs from around the world on the... Uh, on the Christmas Christmas album. Album. Yep, we have so French we, in Noel Noel French Noel boys sang the solo yeah. in there. And we have Wexler Carol, which is... I wrote I did in Irish. Nice, it's very nice. That's where I'm from. So, yes, that's sure I'd forgotten that. Well, we'll be looking. And what's the name of the Christmas album? A good question, to which oh, I currently unnamed. have no answer. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'd like it. Um, what would you well, like I, it to be, Daniel? Uh, Christmas oh, classics it? with Libra. Thank you very or much. Or cr- Christmas around the world. Oh, uh, yeah. yes. Yeah. With Libra. Don't all forget all with yeah, Libra. We have to make it quite, yeah. Might be pushing it a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, whatever it is, we're well, going to buy it. Okay. We can't wait. And uh, this has just been so much fun to talk to the boys, to have you here again with us, not only in concert, but uh, to take the time to come on the radio again. Everybody wants to hear what's the newest thing. Do you have a, a little secret to tell us of where the next tour might be? Next tour will be Japan, I'm afraid. Japan, so October. you'll need to come to Tokyo. Uh, you could also actually couple it with a visit to the World Rugby Oh, the, oh, the, the World, World Rug Cup, Cup. Cup. Which, which is also on in at, during that time. Yep, yeah, oh, so exactly. you, when you get a chance to do a little of that? I, what, playing rugby? Uh, or attending <laughs> a, a, a game. Yeah. No, so you could uh, not. see one of the matches and come over to the concert. I like it. Got your day planned out. Yeah, he's got your day planned out. Well, this has been an incredible day, and so thank you so much for being with us. We have one more song to listen to. to tell us about that briefly. Uh, this is Benedictus Deus, actually, which is also on a soundtrack which we recorded for a film called the, I think it's called The Greatest Miracle and was composed by an L.A.-based uh, composer, Mark McKenzie, who oh, wrote the music yes, uh-huh. for this. And it is the words of the divine praises. Well, it is so wonderful to have you here. Boys, thank you so much for being on the show. And Robert, thank you for being back with us. A, a long-time friend. We've been friends for a long, long time. And uh, it was such an honor to bring you to St. Louis. And I love bringing you here. I hope you'll make your way to Los Angeles and Orange County every single visit, especially next year. To be in the cathedral would be fabulous. And uh, this is Music from the Tower. And as always, I encourage you to get out and listen to live performance of some great music. Make it live, even though their CDs are amazing. You must go track them down and see where that next concert is and hear music in live performance. Until the next episode of Music from the Tower, this is John Romero, your host. Thank you for being with us, and we'll see you next time.